Welcome to the Secret Scriptorium, where ancient knowledge and mystical realms converge. In this illuminating episode, we embark on a journey into the arcane world of demonology, focusing on the enigmatic Seven Kings of Hell. Let's begin with an introduction to historical demonology and the occult. Demonology, the study of demons and beliefs about them, has a multifaceted history that intersects with theology, folklore, and occult practices. Its origins can be traced to ancient civilizations where malevolent spirits and deities formed an integral part of mythologies. These entities were often seen as responsible for misfortune, disease, and other calamities. In ancient Mesopotamia, for instance, demons like Lamashtu and Pazuzu were believed to bring harm to humans, while in other cultures, such as ancient Greece, Entities like the daemons could be benevolent or malevolent. See, with the advent of Christianity, demonology took on a new dimension. Early Christian theologians such as St. Augustine wrote about demons, often associating them with fallen angels who rebelled against God. This period saw the development of a hierarchy of demons, inspired in part by the existing hierarchies of angels. The notion of the seven princes of hell emerged in this context, representing a structured, infernal counterpart to the celestial orders. Demonology gained significant momentum during the medieval period and the Renaissance. The infamous witch hunts and trials, particularly in Europe, were partly fueled by demonological beliefs. Treatises like the Malleus Maleficarum, which means the Hammer of Witches by Heinrich Kramer and James Sprenger further solidified the fear and fascination with demons, portraying them as malevolent beings in league with witches. The Ars Goesia, the first book of the Lesser Key of Solomon, is a cornerstone in demonological literature. Believed to have been compiled in the 17th century, it draws upon earlier texts and traditions. It lists 72 demons, providing descriptions, sigils, and procedures for summoning them. These demons are depicted with specific ranks, such as kings, dukes, and earls, illustrating a complex infernal hierarchy. While it does not explicitly enumerate the seven kings of hell, it does mention several demons of high rank, which later occult traditions and demonologists may interpret as akin to such kings. These include entities like Beleth, Asmodei, and Baal. Each of these demons is ascribed unique powers and attributes, reflecting the diverse roles ascribed to demons in the occult lore. The idea of the seven kings of hell is not directly found in classical demonological texts, but is rather a more modern amalgamation. It is influenced by the classifications in the Ars Goetia, as well as by cultural and mythological motifs from various traditions. In contemporary occultism and demonology, the seven kings of hell are often interpreted symbolically. They are seen as archetypal figures representing various aspects of the human experience, moral challenges, or natural forces. This symbolic interpretation aligns with the broader trend in modern occultism to view traditional demonology through a psychological or metaphorical lens. Let us discuss the identities and attributes of the seven kings of hell. Number one, Lucifer, the bringer of light. Traditionally known as the morning star or the bringer of light, Lucifer is often depicted as the epitome of pride and rebellion in Christian demonology. His fall from grace, primarily due to his refusal to submit to God's will, marks him as a symbol of intellect and enlightenment in some occult circles. In the context of the Seven Kings, Lucifer represents the sin of pride and is often seen as the primary ruler of hell. Number two, Satan, the adversary. Satan, whose name means adversary. In Hebrew, is often conflated with Lucifer, but holds a distinct identity in various theological and occult texts. Regarded as the embodiment of wrath and opposition, Satan's role has evolved from being an accuser and tester of faith in early Judeo-Christian texts to a rebellious fallen angel in later Christian demonology. As one of the kings, he epitomizes the sin of wrath. Number three, Beelzebub. Lord of the Flies. It's originally a Philistine deity named Baalzebub. Beelzebub was demonized in Judaic and later Christian traditions. Portrayed as one of the chief lieutenants of hell, he is often associated with gluttony. His title, Lord of the Flies, metaphorically suggests decay, corruption, and an insatiable nature, characteristics attributed to his dominion in hell. Number four, Asmodus, King of Demons. 
Asmodus, a figure rooted in Persian and Jewish mythology, is a demon often associated with lust. Known for his attempts to thwart the love of Tobias and Sarah in the Book of Tobit, Asmodeus is depicted as a creature of carnality and temptation. In the hierarchy of hell, he reigns as the emblem of unbridled desire and seduction. Number 5. Leviathan The Twisting Serpent Leviathan, so originating from ancient Near Eastern religions and adopted into Jewish belief, is described as a massive sea serpent or dragon. This demon king represents envy in the Seven Kings schema. Leviathan's portrayal as a monstrous entity lurking in the deep waters symbolizes the insidious and consuming nature of envy. Number 6. Mammon The Avaricious Mammon, a term derived from the New Testament, personifies greed and wealth. In demonology, Mammon is often depicted as a deity or demon encouraging excessive materialism and avarice. As one of the kings of hell, his influence is seen in the unending human pursuit of material gain at the expense of spiritual values. Number 7. Belphegor The Lord of the Gap Belphegor, a demon whose origins may lie in Moabite worship, is associated with sloth and the seduction to evil through invention. He is believed to grant riches and discoveries to those who offer sacrifices to him. In the infernal hierarchy, Belphegor represents the temptation to laziness and the allure of ingenious but morally dubious solutions. Other notable mentions of the Seven Kings is Thoria Faust, who makes a pact with the devil Mephistopheles, is a seminal work in Western literature that has significantly influenced the perception of demons, including the Seven Kings while not explicitly one of the kings, embodies aspects of their cunning and manipulative nature. Dante Littiere's Inferno, part of his epic poem, The Divine Comedy, offers a vivid portrayal of hell and its denizens. Though the seven kings are not directly mentioned, Dante's imaginative description of hell circles and their rulers has had a lasting impact on the visualization of demonic hierarchies in Western culture. In contemporary occult practice, the Seven Kings of Hell are sometimes invoked or referenced in ritualistic contexts. Their symbolism is often used to represent psychological archetypes or esoteric principles, rather than being taken as literal entities. Subscribe to the Secret Scriptorium and embark on a voyage into the forbidden realms of knowledge. Whether you're a seasoned occultist or a curious seeker, our in-depth explorations into demonology and the supernatural will captivate your imagination.